Hello friends and welcome back. It's time for story time. I hope you're ready for more Gus the Ghost. Today we'll read Gus Loved His Happy Home by Jane Thayer. If you're new to my channel, I read stories, books. Um, if you have any specific books you'd like to hear me read, um, drop it in the comments with the name and the author and I'll see if I can find it or if I already have it. You never know because I do love all my books. There's Mr. Linney coming to join us. Um, and please feel free to say a shout out, leave a comment, give a thumbs up, and subscribe. So let's get started reading Gus Loved His Happy Home. That old ghost called Gus loved his attic home in the historical museum. He could bang his bang clank equipment. Look at him. And he's got all his equipment to make it. And there's Cora the cat and Mouse the mouse. He could hang up the gorgeous sheets he wore. His roommates were Mouse the Mouse and a cat called Cora. Cora was a very nice person. She slept in the other twin bed. Mouse preferred a sleeping bag and he was a cranky old thing. But Gus said, Mouse is Mouse. Gus had this happy home because he helped Mr. Frizzle, Mr. F who lived downstairs and ran the museum. Mr. Frizzle was fussy about his museum. He lost his temper and shouted. In fact, he always shouted at Gus because he couldn't see a ghost and never knew where he was. Look at his colorful home and there's Cora and Mouse and grumpy Mr. Frizzle. But Gus got along with Mr. Frizzle very well because he polished the antique tables and scrubbed away footprints with his ghostly scrubbing brush and he washed the windows twice a day. Autumn came and Mr. Frill Frizzle opened up a sign, open in May. I'm off to Florida, he yelled. Dust every day, Gus. Don't open the door to strangers. If everything's shipsick when I get home, you may keep your attic apart apartment. So there's Gus cleaning and there's Mr. Frizzle heading to Florida for the winter. Gus dusted for a while, then he said, I'll clean house right before Mr. Frizzle gets home. Now I'm going to have a little fun. He joined a class in Needlepoint and that his ghostly friend, Madam Richardson Richardson taught, and he had trouble threading the needle and he kept pricking his finger and had to put a ghostly Band-Aid on it. Madam said maybe he'd prefer some sport. Good, I hate Needlepoint, said Gus. Madam taught him to play croquet, but she always won. And then the ball whacked into his ghostly toe. Gus shouted, no more croquet. And he went home and bandaged his toe. He tried swimming lessons. He loved to float on his back and he got a medal for swimming fast and he learned some fancy dives. But what use is swimming to a ghost, Cora, he asked. Cora said swimming was not her idea. Snow came. Gus took skiing lessons. Then he tumbled and sprained his ghostly ankle. Cora said cooking was a cozy hobby, and he could start with fish cakes. Mouse said he'd eat it if F Gus made cheesecake. Cora and Mouse gained weight, but Gus kept burning fingers until every ghostly finger wore a ghostly band-aid. Enough fish cakes and cheesecakes, he yelled and tore off his apron. Mouse stalked out to eat while Cora looked reproachful. Look at his little band-aids. Poor Gus, he can't find a hobby. Sometimes it's hard to find what we like, but it's a good thing to keep trying because you just never know. Spring was in the air. Frizzle will be home soon. I should do some spring cleaning, said Gus. But he had spring fever, so he and Cora went looking for violets. And then they watched, saw children flying kites. That looks like fun, cried Gus. It does look like fun. Look at all the color. It kind of matches all the color in his in his ghostly costume. He asked Madame R.R. to make a flowered kite to match his flowered sheet. And he took hold of the kite string and up went the kite. And up went Ghost, since he weighed no more than a leaf. My goodness, he gasped. See you later, Cora. Have a nice day, Cora called. Mouse muttered, you're a fool. <laughs> I think Mouse Mouse sounds kind of grumpy like Mr. Frizzle. Silly Mouse the Mouse. Up, up, soared the kite with Gus holding the string, and the museum grew smaller and smaller, and Cora and Mouse were specks. And the wind caught the kite, and Gus sailed off. How fast he was going, how fun. Gus sailed joyfully on and on. Goodness, look at how high he is. Way down there, do you see those little specks? Gus and Cora, uh, Cora and Mouse. 
I don't think I would like to be up that high. That would be scary to me. If I, unless I was in a plane. Then his bandaged hand began to hurt. I can't hold on, he thought. I've got to get home. But the west wind was blowing him further away. Gus knew some useful ghostly words, and he ordered the wind to change. And he felt himself heading for home, through a hole in the clouds. He saw a tiny museum and two specks. I want to go down, please, he shouted. But the roaring east wind couldn't hear ghostly words, and Gus sailed off westward. He was so upset, his fingers were so tired, and without thinking, he let go. Off soared the flowered kite. I'll crash, SOS, mayday, help, said Gus. Look at how high he is, and there's a the little museum. Poor Gus, what's he going to do? But he weighed no more than a leaf, so instead of crashing to earth, he drifted in the air. Gus was astonished. He floated on his back, and he tried his best swimming strokes, and he was swimming in the air. Now he didn't want to go down. I'm flying, I'm flying, Gus shouted to the sky. A flock of blackbirds came hurrying south, home from the south. Gus raced the birds and got a feather for a prize. Wow, look at Gus. He looks like a happy ghost. He did handsprings on the clouds and he caught a falling star and he hitched hiked a ride on a UFO. Gus was having the time of his life up in the blue sky. Suddenly he saw a jet plane coming his way. Uh-oh. You see the little UFO and there's the plane coming for Gus. He better move out of the way. He did a jackknife out of the huge jet's way. That was the most fun, but what did he see? As the jet thundered by, he saw Mr. Frizzle. There he is on the plane. Do you see Mr. Is that? Oh, there's Mr. Frizzle on his way home from Florida. Gus better get back home, make things sure everything's ship shape. Oh my Gus, goodness, Gus thought he's on his way home. I haven't done the spring cleaning. I left the door unlocked. I, he'll rent my apartment to Madam R&R, and, R and I'll have to stay up here forever. He thought of his happy home, his bang-clang equipment, Cora and Cross Old Mouse, and even Frizzle, who wasn't such a bad fellow. No, Gus shouted, I'm going to get there before he does. And he dove through the hole in the clouds, and he swam as fast as he could, down, 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 down. And he landed with a bump on his ghostly head, and Cora came purring, Mouse snarled, so you thought you'd come home. There he is, and there's the picture of the happy home with all the friends. There's Gus landing with Cora and Mouse. Gus rushed indoors and he pulled out his ghostly cleaning tools and he swept and dusted and polished and mopped. He cleaned, finished cleaning as the taxi arrived, bringing Mr. Frizzle from the airport. Mr. Frizzle gazed upon the museum. All ship shape, he shouted, and Gus was felt weak with relief. Look at how busy he is. Clean, clean, clean. And then it does look super nice and clean, doesn't it? Gus looks tired, though. Quite the adventure for them both. He and Cora climbed the stairs for a nap. It's a good thing I had to let go of that kite, Cora, Gus said. I would be miles away, and it's lucky, it, and isn't it lucky I could swim and manage to get down? But I had the most fun I've had in my ghost, whole ghostly life. I'm going flying whenever Frizzle gives me a day off. Maybe I'll take you, Cora. Cora crawled under the bed. Oh, well. Stay home then, said Gus. Suddenly he thought. He'd, we almost lost our home. Gently he patted his bed, his gang, bang clank equipment, and lined his line for his flower sheets. And he peeked in at Mouse, snoring in a sleeping bag. And he was so happy. He wanted his friends to be happy too. See his nice little room and little Cora under the bed and Mouse asleep? And his bang clank equipment and his other sheets he likes to change into is a nice little attic. Gus went to the ghostly chest where he keeps supplies and he took out some catnip. Come on out, Cora, he called. And he could see her handsome black whiskers and topaz yellow eyes. And he took out some smelly cheese. Malice's nose twitched. His eyes popped open and he tumbled out of his sleeping bag. Gus tied their napkins cozily under their chins and he thought, how I love, love, love my happy home. Ah, look at them all having a meal together. How sweet is that? Nice. And I too love my happy home, although I don't have a Gus or a Cora or a Mouse Mouse, but I do have Lenny, Lexi, Mika, and my husband. And so there you go. 
Um, thank you for joining me, and I hope you'll come back and hear another story about Gus. We're going to read another one tomorrow. Um, I think it's Gus Goes to School, if I remember correct, so we'll find out. We'll find out tomorrow. Um, thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a great day.